businesses of any type are allowed to open 100%. It just is inexplicable why you would want to pull back now. The numbers no longer justify government action. A rift over COVID safety. States rushing to reopen already facing backlash. The last thing we need is Neanderthal thinking. So what about Colorado? Do our businesses deserve a break from convoluted COVID rules? I think it's time that we actually trust our citizens. Should we ease back on safety measures? We want to be more cautious than not. Masks are not political. They're public health measures. We're going 360 tonight, unpacking multiple perspectives on this heated debate gripping the nation. How this plays out is up to us. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Tonight, Colorado's counties are facing a rainbow of COVID restrictions. Each color means a different set of rules on capacity caps, last call, and even whether indoor dining is allowed at all. Honestly, it's complicated. Still, there are signs our state is making progress. Now, Texas and Mississippi are taking a much simpler approach. Both are fully reopening businesses and making masks optional. All this as our nation rushes to vaccinate as many people as possible. Over the last week, the U.S. averaged 2 million doses given each day. It is sparking a heated debate on whether it is too soon to let our guard down or if we're overdue for more relaxed rules. Welcome to Denver 7 News at 10. I'm Jessica Porter. Good evening. I'm Andrew Hugh, and thanks so much for joining us tonight. So what is the right approach for reopening Colorado and when exactly should that happen? Tonight we have 360 team coverage. Our CB Cotton is checking in with one business finally getting back on track after a month's long closure. First, Sloan Dickey takes a look at where Colorado leaders stand on what is going to take to get our state and our lives back to normal. <laughs> It feels really good. The sun is shining. It's been a while, so it's kind of nice to be back out here. And Coloradans are looking to the future. It's our new beer called Love the City, um, releasing on 303 Day in a city we're all very proud of. But when it comes to the future, a big question remains. When can we get back to our normal lives? Tonight, we're serving up a round of 360 and a good look at when that might happen. We'll hear from a business owner, a doctor, politicians on both sides of the aisle, and Coloradans. As spring comes, we're all excited for what's ahead. For Denver Beer Co. owner Patrick Crawford, he says the future is bright. I don't know when we should reopen, but I definitely um, think we need to, to look at the science behind it. His company has a new beer, a new tap room, and a new mural to show the world. But when it comes to full reopening, he believes Colorado has done it right, and at least one customer agrees. Really kind of value the way that Colorado is following what the science and medical doctors are saying and doing things in a safe way. In the early days of the pandemic, the threshold for those tougher restrictions was based on hospital capacity, but numbers are now looking good. Cases are declining and vaccine supply is increasing. I'm going to say no, we're not out of the woods yet but I think it's very encouraging. Dr. Eric Lung, the chief medical officer at Sky Ridge, says we can't ease up now. The reason the numbers are where they are is because of what we have been doing for months. Things like social distancing, hand washing, mask wearing, and especially with new variants, Dr. Lung says we have to wait until more people are vaccinated. We have had improvement in our numbers for certain, but I, I would hate to have people tear off the masks and go back to normal life. And Dr. Anthony Fauci calls the move to relax restrictions risky as new variants spread. He says we need to wait until more people are vaccinated and reach herd immunity when around 80% of the population is fully vaccinated. Right now, only about 8% of the U.S. is fully vaccinated. In Colorado, that number is a little over 8.5%. Republican State Representative Patrick Neville says summer is too long of a wait. Well, I think the time to reopen is now. Neville, who at one point sued Governor Polis over the state mask mandate, says it's now time to trust Coloradans. I think we're at a point now where we should actually start trusting our citizens and Quit moving the goalpost on. Governor Polis announced on Tuesday that we may well see something like normal as soon as this summer. We are very hopeful that uh, people who want the vaccine will be able to access it in April and May uh, in time to have a summer that allows them to enjoy everything that Colorado has to offer. But it all depends on one thing the vaccine. It'll also be the actions of Coloradans, namely choosing to take the vaccine when you're eligible, that will bring an end to this public health crisis. And for Coloradans. I think to fully reopen would probably, would be nice if it could be like in the summer, would be good, but who knows. <laughs> they're ready to get back to normal 
once again. We're getting close and the, we're at the, the end of the tunnel right now. It'd be nice to just socialize and see everyone else and just be able to hang out again. Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. We know where Colorado stands on reopening. Now let's keep the 360 perspectives rolling and hear from the states which made the call to fully reopen. For Mississippi's governor, the calculation is pretty simple. With COVID numbers down, it's time to let people make their own choices about safety. The numbers no longer justify government action and executive orders. Mississippians can make their own decisions. They can assess their risk. Texas Republican Senator John Cornyn has another take. He says COVID safety needs to be balanced against the toll of isolation. We need to think about the, the, the victims of domestic violence, the suicides that have taken place, the children that have fallen farther and farther behind. This is not just a one dimensional problem. Another view on this 360 topic comes from President Biden. He's concerned that easing restrictions now could allow dangerous COVID variants to gain ground. The last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine. Take off your mask. Forget it. The CDC director is adding her voice to this 360 discussion as a growing number of states ditch mask rules. She's urging people to take personal responsibility. Every individual has uh, is empowered to do the right thing here, regardless of um, what the, the states decide. I would still encourage individuals to wear a mask, to uh, socially distance, and to do the right thing to protect their own health. Some chains already announced they will stick with mask mandates in store, regardless of state rules. The list includes Target, Walgreens, CVS, Best Buy, Macy's, and Kroger, the company that owns King Supers. In Denver, the rules have eased just enough to allow one volleyball court to start welcoming teams once again. As we continue our 360 look, Denver 7 CB Cotton has the perspective of the business owner who is grateful to be back in business. Mayor Michael Hancock says Denver has gotten close to level blue, but we're not there yet. Countywide, we're still in level yellow, but the owner of this volleyball facility behind me tells me as long as the county sustains its current progress, more of their regular activities can return. You only have to watch for a few seconds to know. In volleyball, the key to winning is to keep the ball bumping. It's also a very athletic sport. But no amount of athleticism would prepare Shane Special for the ways he'd be bumped around off the court. And our sanitizing balls and our sanitizing high touch areas and our taking everyone's temperatures and we have contract tracing for every person who enters the facility and so on. So it's been an interesting road. Special owns Dive Volleyball and Sports Center in Denver. During the ongoing pandemic, he's had to close twice. But now that Denver is in level yellow, the facility is finally open for league games. We've kind of rescheduled how everything works from a scheduling perspective for leagues and for activities to make sure that we have adequate spacing. The efforts haven't been easy. It has been a little bit of a challenge because we kind of fit into two categories because there's also a group sports category. According to the state's COVID-19 dial, restrictions for group sports are more restrictive than the ones for gyms. For example, under level yellow, a gym could have 50% capacity or up to 50 people, whichever one is fewer. Group sports under level yellow has a 25 person cap per activity. We've been trying to follow the more restrictive as opposed to the less restrictive, just in the interest of everyone's safety. And following stricter guidelines has meant more leagues are comfortable returning to the court. We are so excited to be able to just have full programming again, have people out here playing athletics. Like the game of volleyball, life has gotten bumpy, but when you keep the ball moving, that's how you win. People are really, really eager, and I'm, I'm really excited that we'll be able to get back to that eventually. CB Cotton, Denver 7. Another perspective comes from a group of healthcare staff and students in our state. They started a petition urging state lawmakers to take mask rules seriously. The group says it was disappointed to see some Colorado lawmakers failing to wear masks properly, if at all, during a special session in November. They're showing their constituents that it's okay not to take masks seriously either. And it's also, of course, making fun of hundreds of people in Colorado who have passed away from COVID-19. Now, the group says masks are not a political statement. They're a proven way to slow the spread of the virus. The petition already attracted hundreds of signatures. So how early is too early to reopen? Now it's your turn to weigh in. Email your thoughts to 360 at the Denver We read all of your responses.
And while we talk about reopening, we cannot lose sight of just how tough this past year has been. Friday marks one year since the first confirmed case here in Colorado. And Governor Jared Polis will address the state at 6.30 p.m. to honor the lives lost. And you can watch that live right here on Denver 7. I appreciate you. A new plan aimed at helping our lowest paid workers. Minimum wage went up, we went up. Our prices went up. Could raising pay end up costing employees in a different way? How does that improve your quality of life when you have to work two jobs? Tonight, we're taking a 360 look at the plans for a federal minimum wage hike and the effects it could have in our state. After a couple of gorgeous days, we have a new storm coming up. Just how much rain and snow to expect.